Grandview is opting for the Milo support, one of the newer champions to come out in league. Has a AoE cleanse and heal for ultimate, can increase the attack range. Just an just a all in, all out enchanter. She's able to stop some engages, so that's probably why she's picked up. Able to block the Samira from going in, and can also block a Nautilus or some other sort from going in, which is what Creek was probably looking to pair with this Samira as she wants an engage for it. And finally, the Lux pickup and the Kha'Zix pickup, respectively, for Grandview and Creek. Lux going in for the mid lane, is a very standard champ. Not too much about her, just a burst mage, and Kha'Zix, an assassin for Creek's jungler. So it looks like, once again, they're going to be going for a more jungle carry-oriented champion, as that has shown to be successful in the, for them in the past. Hello, Nolan. Can you hear me? Yo. You should share your screen, my Oh, guy. what's up, Wombin? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yes! Yeah? You ready? Let me add on. We have the Singe ban for your top lane and Jack's ban for top lane. Looks so far like Grandview has thrown three bands towards the top laner of Creek, putting very high prior on this top side. There's the Orin band taking out a nice and stable champion. Has very good scaling with the Orin upgrades until the late game. So how are you doing, Wombin? You having a good day? I I am. Can you name a single champion on the screen? Misfortune Milio Willio? What does that say? Milio, oh, Milio, Lux, Samira, <laughs> Malzahar, and Kha'Zix. I'm okay, crazy. Pretty good. How do you? I and know. Um, the final know ban is the Galio targeted towards the support, as Gabby has been playing that quite a lot. Surprised that they didn't ban the Nautilus here. To be honest, it's probably the best champion to pair with Samira. It's very obvious that they wanted it, but maybe Grandview thinks that. Gabby's better on the Galio than on the Nautilus, so they're fine to give it. Gabby has such a weird team comp going right now. Who? Uh, blue Grandview? side. Grandview's blue side, Creek is red side. Okay, okay. Yeah. I don't know about their comp. I think it's really weird. Okay. Hello, hello. How we hello. doing? Good, how are you? Hello. Good. Sorry, I'm a little bit tardy to the party. Just okay. how, did, how did Smash go? Smash did not win state, but they played great and handled the loss with grace and a really deserving team won, so that was good. And now we are playing Grandview. I just saw the Grandview coach a couple minutes ago. Oh, they're going to play that new champ. Amelia? Amelia. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. She can block any um, melee champion engage. So when they see the Samira pick up, it's good. Because you can because even if you get hooked by Nautilus, you can cancel him with your Q. You can cancel any uh any champion engage. Makes except, sense. Except for sense. like an unstoppable, like Malphite or something. I don't know. I don't really like Grandview's comp. It seems kinda weird. Why does it say that our team is the enemy? Because it shows blue side team names and then red side enemy. It's just like if you're drafting. Oh, okay. Game game. I don't know why it's All right, so Anthony's going to play Kha'Zix. Yubo's going to play Pantheon. Exciting, exciting. Is yep. this... Wait, this is this is game one? It got started kind of late. This is game one, yeah. They started at 4.30. Or a little bit after 4.30. Cool, cool. Yeah. That is my dog. I don't know if you can hear her, but she is here. Um, no, can't hear her. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, weird. I don't know. I don't know what Grandview's draft is trying to do. I guess it's just comfort picks for game one. But like I don't know, the Leeson wants to go in, the Tom Kench is to save people from engage. The Lux doesn't really want to go in, the Misfortune doesn't want to go in, the Melia doesn't want to go in. It's a strange one. And this Melio, when did when did he come out? Um, like a month ago. Maybe a bit less. Very new, very new, yeah. I think, I think he came out in April, but he might have come out at the end of March. Okay. Or I have no, or I have absolutely no, like, semblance of time, and he came out earlier than that.
Yeah, end of March, March twenty second. Okay. All right. Okay. Whew. Yeah. He's still disabled in um, pro play and everything for MSI though, since he's still new. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Yep. <sighs> so you said, um, uh, Grandview kind of has a passive team comp. They've um. Yeah, they have a team comp more like where they want to um, play slow because they outrange a lot and then have Creek engage into them. Whereas mm-hmm. Creek has like a full dive comp, go in, you know. Okay. Oh, this is going to be fun then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think Creek has a much more defined draft because they have four champions that want to go in and one champion that wa- that wants to go for picks. So I think their champions make a lot of sense together. Wait, then, which one? Which uh, which uh, champ is Anthony? Anthony is Kha'Zix. Okay. Yeah. So that's the person From... I have to watch out for when uh they're throwing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't. Um. But yeah. From top to bottom, it's Yubo, Anthony, Maggie, Carlos, Gabby. Mm, okay. Hopefully the spectator doesn't break it again. So it's zero percent. So might might just uh yeah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do what I did last time. Thank you for commentating, boys. It's great to have you. Yeah. Nolan did such a great job job last time. And what's your name, Juanbin? Uh yeah. Uh, I honestly know nothing about league, but I am here. That's okay. It's always great to have another friendly voice. He's here for the journey. Maggie has been playing a ton of Malzahar lately. Yeah, we we picked it in that one series that I played. I was like, Malzahar's probably a good pick because you can just press R to get, you know, free picks and everything. And it looks like we've just been playing a lot of things. Opponent, we lost to them once this year, but they've been, they've been pretty dominant in League of Legends the past two or three years. They're back to back to back to back champions, I think. Oh no, they're not back to back to back to back. They're just back to back. We were back to back the two years before that. No, no, because no, no, no. no. Uh, if you count the spring, or oh, no, they're not. The spring are like yeah, yeah, yeah. They won spring my sophomore year, then fall, then spring, then fall. Yeah. And then before that, we won uh, fall, spring. Hoping to convince. I think I've just about got Anthony to come back for one more run, and Pa might be right there with him, but TBD. Yeah. Yo, Matthew Ha. Huh? <laughs> but in the fall, you'll be a college kid, and I guess you you'll be out. But we might try to make make a run in the fall, TBD. We've got some some promising younger talent. You know, we got Carlos as a freshman. It's been great to get to know him this season. And- Still got Gabby and Lauren and a bunch of other bunch of other people, so yeah. that would be great. I think we're gonna theoretically add Valorant to Paul, which I think might coach some of our league players, but I think that's really the demand for Valorant is really high. Valorant won't won't be fast as any chance. Um Overwatch is as fast as Oh, yeah, well, Overwatch never happened. They um, never happened. They, no. Oh, oh, well, they would be, they would be old system. Well, they, like, had, we, we, had, still have, we still have an Overwatch team. We still have teams in non chassa sanctioned games, but those teams just compete for, you know, the victory of the 
Colorado play versus bracket versus like an official Chassa sanctioned title. Just so like they the, still uh, get trophies and they can still win. But yeah, we still have Overwatch, Team Splatoon. We have, you know, a couple different games that aren't Chassa approved. Do you still have the CSGO team? No. Oh, we, okay. we, we, we got rid of all the rated M games. Because I can understand not wanting to play rated M games at the high school level, but the games that are rated T, like Overwatch and Valorant, I feel like are appropriate for teens. That's why they're rated teen. And if that's what kids are wanting to play, we want to be sure to offer that option. So yeah. that's, that's the play. But yeah, CSGO, R6, we don't compete in those. Um, but yeah, we're definitely trying to add Valorant in the fall. Valorant is a tough esport, especially right now. So that'll be interesting. Well, you know, they might find people because, you know, Valorant's starting up that, um, the, like, in-game the tournaments. Premiere, yeah, yeah, premiere. yeah, premiere. So it's, like, they got, like, like eSports leagues for, like, anyone who wants to join up pretty much built into the game. It's like Clash, but if it was a league instead of just a tournament, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That is cool. One of my New York teacher friends, his school just won Valorant State for New York, which oh, was cool. exciting. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. One of the people that you met when you used to teach in New York, right? I did. I taught in Brooklyn for five years, middle school math and science. Oh, Got my nice. master's in education out there and then came home to Colorado. I'm actually a Grandview graduate, but now is probably not the time to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I went to Grandview. Sure. Yeah. And now I'm back teaching in my home district, which has been good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Looks like there might be some action up here on the top side as Anthony's going for the jungle for the scuttle, but it looks like Lee Sin is just gonna leave it and recall. Oh no, he casts his recall. They're looking to collapse on Anthony, who has walked into the enemy jungle. Might be going a little over aggressive, got hit by the Lux Root, and he is going to die. First blood over to Lee Sin. Anthony's running it down already, I see. <laughs> just yeah. like last game. Kind of cared about skin. Did he? He did, yeah. I, he, I, he, I only watched the, the second one. Like half of yeah, the second Yeah, he carried the second game really hard. Sheesh. He made like one play near the end that completely won the entire game. It was pretty nice. But yeah. I was going to say before that, I like how um, Creek was making as many over-aggressive plays as they had <laughs> yesterday that led them to get behind early, but... Looks like Anthony saw the Lee Sin recalling and thought he had the chance to walk in and ward the enemy jungle, but um, it looked like Blue Side uh, got got a whiff of him uh, coming in. We're able to punish him for that. back to lane while Pantheon is going to have to walk because he decided to take Ignite to be aggressive in the lane knowing that he has his global ultimate to be able to ult back to lane or to ult to gank other lanes if needed. Even though Anthony did have that slight slip up at the start of the game it looks like he is still having a sizable lead in the jungle already getting a second recall off and going back to full clear again, while Lee Sin still has two camps left for his second clear. Maggie's going to TP back mid to be able to catch this wave right here. And since the Lux has no TP, Maggie might be able... Oh, she's going to cancel the recall. And she's going to use her R on the Lux. That's going to chunk her out really big. I don't think she's going to be able to blow any summoners here. But this is going to be really bad for the Lux because she's going to have to back. And since she has no TP herself, Maggie will be able to deny her some CS and XP. 
Good play by Maggie in the mid lane, getting Pryo, which is now allowing Anthony to move towards the dragon to look to secure this first Drake over here. Looks like a fight is happening. Oh, there's a gank mid. Maggie's getting tunked out and forced to flash. Good play by the Lee Sin. Looks like Tom Kench has used his ult topside in a 1v1 versus Yubo. Yubo's going to try and run away, but it looks like he might just die to the Tom Kench here, and there's the Q to pick up the solo kill. But Mountain Dragon goes over to Creek. That's going to be very nice for them. They're all just going to get a little more tanky from that, and it just makes uh, things a bit easier for them. Not going to have to be as scared. The Lux still not taken her first recall yet. Seems a bit rough for her, but the Lee Sin is covering her lane to make sure that Maggie is not able to jump on her again and try and get the kill. Looks like Grandview's bot lane has reset, and it looks like MF is opting for the lethality build with Eclipse's game over a more crit-oriented Kraken build. So we're going to see how that pans out. Knowing that Creek does have a few more tanky members on their team, see if she's going to be able to put in work with that Eclipse. Creek all going for standard builds, it would seem, with the Noon Quiver pickup from Samira, and the Dirk for both Kha'Zix and Pantheon, trying to get those lethality items early, and the Tear pickup for Malzahar in the mid lane, so that she can get the Seraphs to be able to s stay longer in lane with the mana sustain, and also get that shield for more survivability to avoid being one-shot. Lux has finally taken her first recall and is able to pick up a Lost Chapter, along with a Dark Seal and Boots. She backed on around 2k gold. Maggie was able to hold her in lane for much longer. And it looks like now, instead of trying to push the wave to get a punish, she decides to leave it since the cannon wave will reset on its own and will not end up losing much for this to go hover topside to look for a possible play on the Tom Kench. But Tom Kench has both W and a control ward in the bush, so he should be pretty safe here. But it looks like he's going to W into Anthony. They don't know that Maggie is nearby, and they're going to try and go for this 2v2, thinking that they're stronger. But the Malzahar has now arrived, and Creek might be able to turn this. Oh, he hits the, the Q on Anthony, but an instant ult for Maggie to save him. And she picks up the kill on Lee Sin. Lee Sin going way too deep, not respecting the Malzahar or or potentially thinking that it was still not up from the mid lane play. But Creek is able to get on the board here, and it looks like they're going to potentially try to turn this into a Herald opportunity. Grandview is trying to stop them in a 3v2, and Creek has the lower health bar, so they're going to back off. But they're going to really like taking that uh, 1 for 0 trade. It really puts Anthony back ahead in the jungle since he has this huge CS lead, and along with the extra gold from first strike. Oh, it looks like Lee Sen's coming back up top lane. Yubo might be in some trouble up here. We're going to see if he can get the return kill. He's going to flash out. He's going to charge the Q. But it looks like Lee Sin is here to just pick up the free kill. And there is the kill. Going over the Tom Kent, so not great for Grandview. They would obviously much rather have that on the damage dealer Lee Sin. But Yubo goes down a second time. It looks like uh, Grandview is pinging mid. Lee Sin walking towards that mid lane, trying to see if he can make a play. He's walking all the way around to see if he can make a play on Maggie. She should know he's here because there was a ward there. But it looks like she didn't see him and he's going to get the kick in and Maggie's just going to get one shot. And there's another go for this reset. So far in the early game, it looks like things are going Grandview's favor with them being able to get these advantages in their lanes. With their top laner being 2-0 and and up over 20 CS. And it seems like Lee Sin has just been everywhere on the map so far, able to apply pressure in all the lanes except bot lane, which has been pretty stable so far. Neither lane really building much of an advantage at all with them having almost identical gold. But Anthony is here. He's going to fly.